I got this ThinkPad T430 for pretty cheap, and I was specifically looking for one with a damaged screen. I was specifically looking for a ThinkPad T530 with a damaged screen because I already have one laying around. And I've been holding on for this for quite a long time. Um, I originally got this from when I had a deal where I bought five ThinkPads for a dollar and 25 cents. This was before I even started the channel, um, but it was a pretty good deal and four out of five of those laptops worked, but one of them had a dead motherboard. So I ended up uh, salvaging the screen from that one. Not only do I plan on fixing the screen on this laptop, but I also plan on doing some upgrades as well. First, I'll turn it off and then I'm going to start disassembling it. After a lot of finagling, I was finally able to remove the palm rest. I could see that this model unfortunately did not come with a dedicated GPU. I also could see that the cooling for this model is actually not very good because if you see, the heat sink goes up here, but it doesn't go to the secondary exhaust port. So really it's only using one of the exhaust ports. This is fine for the 35 watt CPU that's in here, but if I wanted to upgrade it to a more powerful quad core processor, um, then I would need to have a better cooling solution. There is also a different quad core processor that could be 35 watt uh, as well, but I don't feel like spending a whole lot of money on this project, so I'll probably put in a dual core i7. But before I do a CPU upgrade, of course, I want to first fix the screen. I should probably unhook everything before I actually remove all the screws. So I'll do that first. Now that I've gotten all that undone, I just need to pull it all out. Oh, and I almost forgot about these wires. If I wanted to, I could just put the palm rest back on and use this as a headless laptop and use an external monitor. But since I have an extra screen, I might as well install it. I connected the cables for the screen just so that I could test to see if it works. All right, the screen seems to be working. Of course, it's not going to boot it to anything because I don't have any hard drive in there. Now I'll remove everything and we'll get to the upgrades, since this is all taken apart. Looking at this heat sink, I can see that this area doesn't even have any metal strips in it. It's just a blank it's just a blank port. Other models like the W530 would have a heat sink that goes to here and would have a separate heat vent in this area. Kind of an interesting difference there. I remove the i5 CPU and I get out my bag of other CPUs, to see where I can find the i7 that I have somewhere. I managed to find the i7. 
It's a dual core i7, but it should be faster, at least a little bit, compared to the i5. Also, this is just an extra CPU that I have, and I didn't specifically order this CPU. So I'm just using the things that I have available to me. I insert the new CPU and tighten it up. And I'll clean off some of the old thermal paste from the heatsink. I started to push out some of the thermal paste, but as it turns out, I'm all out of this thermal paste. So instead, I'll use this other cheap thermal paste that I have. It won't be as big of a deal with this computer since I'm not using a higher wattage CPU. Now that I got the faster CPU in, I'm going to start routing some of these wires. I decided that I might as well replace the CMOS battery while I'm here, as it's probably pretty old and ready to be replaced anyways. Now that I've gotten the wires wired up, I just need to put in the screws for the screen hinges. Now what about the other upgrades? For the other upgrades, I got 16 gigabytes of RAM, and I've got an mSATA SSD. I chose this Lighton 256 gig mSATA SSD, which I installed in the mSATA slot, which can be used for WAN, which is why there's the antennas here, but 3G WAN isn't supported in the United States anymore. I bought this used Crucial RAM, which I haven't tested yet, but I guess we'll find out if it works. And I believe these are 1600 megahertz. I removed the four gigabyte stick, put that there, and I'll wait until I flip it over before I install the other stick. First, I will put the other parts on. But before I do that, I'll just test it again real quick. Oh, and I gotta plug the fan in. Hold on. Let me just restart it, because I did forget to plug the fan in. Whoopsie. All right, it has a clock error. That's because I had, that's because I had just installed the CMOS battery and the old one was still keeping a charge, but um, that just means I need to set the date again. If you ever have this error, all you gotta do is just uh, change the time. I don't need to be super accurate. It just needs to be uh, just needs to be newer than the date that it currently is. So I'm gonna say that it's the year 2092. It really doesn't matter. And of course, I haven't installed anything on that SSD yet, so um, so it won't boot anything. But it does recognize it, so that's good. Put this down, snap this back into place. It'll, it'll hold together better once I screw it in. And of course I need to not forget to put the ribbon cable in for the touch pad. I always forget that. Then I just install all the screws back. And for now, I'll use this SATA SSD to do some tests in Linux first. And before I start it up, I'll give it a quick little cleanup. 
I booted up Linux and checked the display settings. I could see that the screen has a resolution of 1600 by 900, which is not as nice as some of the 1080p screens that some models could have come with. Although I can play a video just fine and I don't think it looks too bad. Browsing the web isn't too slow either, with a reasonable snappy response time. Minecraft Java Edition is decently playable, even without dedicated graphics, as HD4000 is part of the recommended requirements. While it's playable, I could tell it's not always the smoothest FPS, especially when it's loading new terrain. It's also decent enough to play some Linux games as well, such as Super Tux Kart. Of course, it's not too surprising that this computer would run smoothly on Linux since Linux tends to be a lot less bloated than Windows. I decided that I would test out Windows on this computer anyways. I removed my Linux SSD and replaced it with a 500GB mechanical hard drive. I'm not going to install Windows 11 on this, but I will install it on the mSATA SSD that I had installed earlier. I won't bore you of the process of installing Windows 11, so I'll just skip right to the boot. I've finished installing Windows 11, and I also installed all the drivers and updates that I needed to. I was even able to activate the operating system with the original product key. Browsing the web is still fairly decent. Sure, maybe not as fast as a brand new computer, but I'd say this is still quite usable. And no, this processor is not officially supported by Windows 11. In fact, it's several generations behind the oldest supported CPU, which is the 8th generation CPUs. So this is far from the latest and greatest, and to many people, this computer would not be worth fixing, especially if you have to pay full price for a used screen. To me, it was worth it. I don't know what it is about old ThinkPads, but I just like the idea that I can take something that's garbage to most people and transform it into something that can be usable. It's just something that brings me joy. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video if you want to see more content like this, leave a like and a comment. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.